Amen. Amen. Okay, so I want to start off with this here. Adventists has surrendered to the COVID dictatorship citing individual freedom, consciousness, threat during the pandemic. Slowly but surely, our rights are being stripped from us. First individually, now corporately as a church body. Because we're scared. I'm just put it like that, we're scared. So now it's like, you take this jab or no job, mm. no money, no income, nothing like that. And many of the conferences, especially here in the North American division have pretty much say, okay, you know what? We are gonna do what the CDC says, you know, we're gonna do what they say do. Because we don't wanna lose our 501c3. But for those of y'all that know, working taxes, y'all should know that here. We don't want to lose our precious income. So we need to take the jab, do what we need to do, and move on. Mm. And that's a common thing for us in the church. Okay, so I'm gonna put it like this. Roman Catholicism has made its way into the church. Y'all can see that clearly. Pretty much many of the churches that I know of are doing mass. A while ago I told y'all about Roman Catholicism doing mass in the Seventh-day Adventist churches. Well, it's making its way big time into these churches. Even going as far as bowing to, I don't know if you can see this here, up in the top right corner. Left here. Left, left, I'm sorry. Them bowing down to a golden idol. Can y'all believe that? Adventists bowing down to a golden statue. Did y'all not see what happened to the Israelites in the Old Testament? How God, well, yeah, he did wipe them out. And now we're repeating the same thing, what they're going through. Seven Day Adventists, Roman Catholicism, two different entities coming together. All the world will wander after the beast. It's just a mess, you know? And we're letting it happen. We're supposed to be the remnant church. But hey, anything goes here. SDA leaders bows down to a golden idol. I was telling you about the bowing down to the golden statue. Okay, it says here, Pastor Andrew um, Henriquez. Henriquez, thank you of Say to Serve Ministry spoke with us on February 15th, which was this past Tuesday, about the growing, excuse me, that's, that's the type right there, the growth of ecumenical movement causing our leaders to bow before the golden calf in Catholic churches. So basically, they're taking it one step further. They say that by bowing down to the golden calf, we're saving lives. We're doing good to this church. Mm. Can you imagine just bowing before an idol mm. and say, God, we're doing you a service, mm. a Lord, favor. Help us. All because we want to go alone to get alone mm. and not be that remnant. Mm. So y'all see what, what we're dealing with as a church. Y'all see the mess, mm -hmm. the confliction that we're dealing with. Make Sunday a day of rest again. COVID has pretty much made a new kick, if you will. Okay, forget about the Sabbath, forget about keeping God's day. Let's just keep Sunday, a day that God did not bless holy, because we feel as though that's gonna do us good. We need to keep one day of rest from our busy lives. So, like I said, forget about what God said. Let's just do our thing so we can get back to being prosperous again. So God can favor us again. Because mm. we're, as Ellen White put it, you know, many of us are offending God by not keeping the first day holy. Great, uh, great controversy. Speaks of that, man. 
So, what did you just, what did seventh day? The seventh day, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. the seventh day. Yeah. Well, yeah. as they say, you know, they claim that seventh day is Sunday. But we all know that seventh day is Saturday. So, pretty much they're raising hands of saying, let's keep the first day of the week holy as much as possible because we're desecrating it. We're doing God a disservice. I want y'all to take a look at this here. The chaos is increasing worldwide and we are headed for a new world order. Do you see all the civil unrest, the calamities, the economic strikes that we're dealing with on a daily basis? And Revelation 13 verses, yeah, verse three says here, and all the world will wonder after the beast because they're looking for a moral solution to all the problems. And they see this man right here um, for those of y'all that follow me on Facebook, I posted something about the Pope, the imposter, and I kind of got a lot of backlash about that because I called him out on that. But y'all can see clearly they're looking to the Pope for an economic recovery as a savior to all the world's problems that we're dealing with, all the uncertainties. And lastly, I want to appeal to this to y'all. Will we remain faithful to Jesus to the end? Mercy. We see all that's going on. The devil is doing everything he said he was going to do in Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. But what is the church doing? What are we doing, the people? Are we just coming to church? Mm -hmm. Just sit up here, you know, <laughs> saying happy Sabbath, you know, give up a tithe or offering, anything like that, and go about our business? Mercy. Or are we doing everything that God has called us to be. Time will tell, you know, lip service is going to be tested. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that in my sermon. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Most kind God, gracious Father God, Lord, we see what's going on around us, Lord. All the signs and many things that you said in your word were taking place, Lord. But I pray that you help the church to wake up to everything that's going around us. Lord, help us not to be asleep, but ever be awoke, Lord, for you. You're soon to come. Help us, God. This I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.